All right, welcome back. So let's start by reminding ourselves about accounts receivables. All right, there's lots of different types of receivables, right? And we've only really been exposed to accounts receivable, but receivables is any amount owed to the company. Now there are some common types, right? Obviously AR, notes receivable, could be interest receivable from our bank, could be taxes receivable from the federal government. Maybe we're getting a tax refund, so we book that as a tax receivable, right? So it's any amount owed to us, right? Doesn't really matter the party, bank, government, this could be a supplier, and we know accounts receivable are from our customers, okay? So accounts receivable or AR are amounts due to the company, due to the company from customers. And this usually arises from sales, right? Rising from, and those sales either take the form of like a service that we've provided or products that we have sold from services or products provided by us, by the company. Okay. So receivable is any amount owed from any party to the company. And here were some examples. We're going to focus on that first one, amounts owed from our customers. And they owe us because we've provided them with a service or a product. All right. Now we know the journal entry to record this, right? The journal entry is to increase AR or debit AR, and credit either service revenue or sales revenue. Okay, so you debit accounts receivable, which increases it, and our credit is, we'll say sales. Now, of course, if we're selling a product, we have to do that second journal entry that we learned in chapter six. Cost of goods sold, and inventory. Okay, but mostly in this chapter, they're just going to focus on the first journal entry. They know you understand the second entry that needs to be made, but since we're talking about AR, you'll see in the chapter they mostly omit this second entry just for space, for, for um, just getting right to the point. All right. And we've talked about why it is we have to make this first journal entry. It's to comply with our revenue recognition principle, right? Which says to record the revenue in the same time period that it's earned. And it's earned when we provide the customer with that service or product. Even though this isn't cash, right? We didn't get the cash yet. Under cash basis, we wouldn't record it till we get the cash. But under accrual basis accounting, which is the type of accounting method we follow, we have to record the revenue when it's earned, even if we don't get cash. So that's why we use that receivables account. Okay. Now, the inherent problem with allowing customers to pay on credit. So when customers may pay on account, right? And when we say on account, we mean a direct line of credit with the company. Direct line of credit. Like they're not using a third party Visa, MasterCard, right? We are directly extending them the credit of credit from the company. So the problem with that is when customers pay on account, there is a chance, a chance of defaults, right? 
we of course hope that usually within 30 days, the next journal entry we make will be to increase cash and remove that customer's accounts, right? That's always the journal entry that follows that first one. But there's a chance that we're never gonna get that cash, right? It might be a small chance, but there is a chance in here. Just like when you tell a friend like, oh yeah, I'll spot you this time, just pay me back later. There's a chance they're gonna forget. Maybe they're gonna lose their job, come across tough times and they can't pay you back. There's just a small chance that you're never gonna get your cash by, you know, lending them some money or paying for them, right? There's a chance. And so we talk about in this chapter, how do we account for that? Because of course we have to do some sort of estimate for that because we have to follow the gap um, assumption of conservatism, right? Which says don't overstate your assets, don't overstate your income. So of course we're gonna have to make some sort of provision for just that chance that not all customers will pay. All right, we'll talk about that in the next video. Just wanted to reintroduce us to our old Fred accounts receivable, what it is, how we've recorded it in the past, why, because of revenue recognition, and the journal entry that we've previously made um, after booking the account receivable is to record the collection of that account. And in our next video, we'll talk about what happens when that customer maybe doesn't pay off that account. All right, see you then.